the D flip-flop. The D flip-flop is the third circuit we will examine. This block diagram shows the D flip-flop has two inputs and two outputs. The inputs are labelled D, which stands for data, and the other input is used for a clock signal. The outputs are labelled Q and Q0. Q0 is the inverse of Q. This is the logic diagram for a D flip-flop. Notice that the NOR flip-flop is used in this circuit with other logic gates added. This helps to prevent the do not use condition found in the basic NOR and NAN type flip-flops. The clock input is a constant high-low signal which will control when Q and Q0 will change condition. The truth table for this circuit is as follows. When the clock pulse is at zero and D is at zero, there is no change on Q or Q0. If D is at one and the clock pulse is zero, there is also no change. When the clock pulse is at one and D at zero, Q0 will go high and Q will go low. When both D and the clock pulse receive a 1, Q will go high and Q0 will go low. Let's go to the simulator to take a closer look. Here is the D flip-flop set up with a logic source on D and on the clock input. At the output we have LEDs and current limiting resistors. We can now test the truth table we discussed previous. With both inputs at 0, 0, Q0 is high. If we change D to 1 and keep the clock input at 0, the output does not change. If we change the clock input to 1 and D to 0, Q0 remains high. And if we change both the clock and D to 1, we would expect Q to go high, but it will not go into this condition until we turn the clock pulse back to 0 and then to 1. This is because the clock input needs to be a constant 0-1 signal and the condition of the flip-flop will not change until the next time the clock inputs a 1 signal. Let's change the input on the clock from a logic input to a logic train. And now, when we restart the simulation, we get a clock pulse running on the clock input. This can be seen clearer by increasing the simulation speed. When D has a zero input, then Q0 remains high. When we change the D input to 1, Q then becomes high. When we change D back to zero, Q goes back to low and Q0 becomes high. Let's examine the waveform output to look at what the input and output signals are doing. Here we can see the waveforms produced when we tested the D flip-flop. This is the output for clock, D, Q and Q0. When we started the simulation, the clock pulse was rising and falling constantly, providing a 0-1 input. D was at 0, and Q was also at 0 and Q0 at 1. Notice that 
when D is then set to 1, Q and Q0 do not change until the next rising clock pulse. When we change D back to 0, Q goes to 0 and Q0 to 1. Again, this happens on the next rising clock pulse. Let's go back to the simulator to examine some practical applications for the D flip-flop so we can understand the circuit better. This circuit is a model of a 4-bit data register. The purpose of this circuit is for a binary input to be placed into the circuit, which is then stored in memory, then output to a data bus. The circuit has four D flip-flops, which are controlled by the same clock pulse. <coughs> there are some logic gates, which connect to the D input. They consist of an OR gate, two AND gates, and a NOT gate. Each of the flip-flops have these logic gates at the D inputs. The logic gates in this configuration are also known as a multiplexer. Each of the multiplexers are tied together with the top input switch. This switch is called the enable switch. It controls when the data is written to memory. The lower input switches are data switches. They are binary inputs which connect into each multiplexer and represent the binary value of 1, 2, 4, and 8. The LEDs at the Q output of each flip-flop will light when a 1 is written to memory and will stay off when a 0 is written to memory. The AND gates furthest to the right have one of their inputs connected to Q. The other input of the AND gates are all tied together and are then connected to an input switch. This part of the circuit is to control when the data in memory is output to another external circuit. To use the circuit, we first need to input a binary value. So we will enter 1010. To write the data to memory, we need to turn the enable switch on. This data is now written to memory. Before we can write another binary input to memory, we need to set enable back to zero. Notice our input of 1010 is still stored. We can now input a new value of 0101. When we set enable to 1, the new value is written to memory. When we set enable back to 0, this holds the value. We can now turn the output switch on to simulate outputting the data from memory to an external circuit. Let's now examine another practical application we can build with D flip-flops. With this circuit, we have used the D flip-flops to create a ring counter. We have four D flip-flops side by side. The clock speed is 10 milliseconds and simulation speed is 19.8 milliseconds. We have a logic train input which is linked to the clock inputs of each flip-flop. The Q output of each flip-flop is connected to the D input. The Q0 output of the last flip-flop connect back to the D input of the first. Let's highlight the Q output of each flip-flop to examine what is happening on the waveform viewer.
as we can see, Q on the first flip-flop goes high, then the second, then the third, then the fourth. One goes high after the other in succession. We can connect LEDs to the Q and Q note outputs to examine the signal's output. As we can see, the LEDs light up in a 1, 2, 3, 4 succession, then turn off in 1, 2, 3, 4 succession. The Q note output does the inverse. This type of circuit would be used as a type of shift register in logic applications. The D flip-flop has applications in computer memory, binary counters and shifters and they are common in computer circuits.